What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. This is Forgo. And today we're going to talk about Ancient One and answer the question as to whether or not she is she worth tier three. And I got to tell you guys, so far, I'm extremely underwhelmed with this character. She really lacks a tremendous amount of damage, and that's in timeline and also in PvE. And that's going to be the biggest caveat to the character. She does have some really good survivability. She does look really, really cool. I mean, I love the aesthetics of this uniform. I mean, it's a beautiful beautiful looking uniform as well as the animations on the character now as far as the build guys she's ranked 201 in the world she's got 53,000 energy attack and that's with her 50 percent increased energy attack leadership her hp is at 62,000. now that's something that is hurting her you know on my account i have 14 percent hp on my cards so she doesn't have a really a lot amount of hp but really they should have given her a little bit more if they wanted to be really good in timeline as far as her other stats i mean her critical damage is at 179%, so that does hurt her damage a little bit, but whenever I slap, say, a CTP of Energy on her, or a Novelist with critical damage, then her critical damage would easily be maxed out. Her attack speed's pretty much maxed out, her crit rate's a little bit low, her ignore defense pretty much maxed out, her dodge is at 52%, and she does have the leadership tag, which, I mean, the thing is, you're just not going to use this character for PvE. As I'll show you guys in a little bit, she has all Mythic Energy Attack Urus on her, and then I got a bunch of HP Urus just to try to increase her H. P, right? And as far as the skills, guys, like her tier three, like this thing is a cool looking skill. It's a beautiful, beautiful skill, but it don't do damage worth a crap. It doesn't do hardly any damage at all. It's just all show and no substance, my friends, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, it's even got a damage proc on it, but Really, they should have gave this girl accumulation. Her passive is nice because it does increase all resistances. And this is going to be the thing about this character. She's going to be more of a support than anything. That's pretty much what you're going to be using her for. Although I think in AC, she's going to be really good in AC. But the increase all damage, elemental damage by 40%. is going to be really great for your elemental characters. The ignore target dodge rate is going to be really great for your other characters as well. Especially against Null. I mean, and against Mephisto, the increase all resistances is going to be really nice. The three uh, it has a all defense down, has three seconds of invincibility, and this is her only uh, form of super armor, I believe, that she has, which is kind of a bummer, guys. Three seconds isn't a long time. You can get guard broken and get thrown back by Null if you're trying to use her in PvE. She does have ignore targeting on her poor skill and invisibility, and this is kind of what made me think that she might be good for PvP, but the, the problem is she's, she kind of reminds me of Wong. She doesn't do near enough damage to take down characters like Thanos, right? She just gets plowed. She doesn't have a whole lot of HP. She just gets destroyed. I mean, the immunity is nice, and the increase all attack by 20% is nice. And then on the Fisco, she gets another increase all attack by 30% and remove all debuff. And the heal is awesome too, guys. And we'll talk a, a little bit more about the heal, the passive. There's that critical damage increase, a guaranteed critical rate, right? And I do think she might be better with a Rage than a proc. I mean, you can play with a proc, but it can be a little tricky. And then her leadership is 50% increase of energy attack, right? Now, as far as the rotation, at least what I've worked out so far, I mean, maybe this could be improved. But you really, you can only cancel her fourth skill. This is the only skill that you can actually cancel super fast. The second skill, you have to let her do, like, if you cancel this thing super fast, you won't get the damage from it. But if you let her do a hit, then you will but she has to do a hit if she does a hit she can set off your proc pretty early and i mean you want to put the proc on the five guys if you're trying to uh, use a proc on her which i wouldn't recommend but uh i mean literally you could go you know three one two four five the one actually will do some residual damage right here like the one like, she doesn't do any hits, and then she just gets those little bit of hits right there. So, you're just incorporating the one with the four and the five. And then the tier three is such a long skill. Kind of reminds you of uh, uh, Wong in the length of it, right? And it's a beautiful skill. It's so gorgeous. I mean, I, I love it. But it don't do damage worth a crap. And it's so long by the time it finishes. I mean, you're already trying to use your proc again, or trying to use your skills, your four or five again, right? I mean, I, honestly, guys, I said earlier, they should have gave her some accumulation. Her type enhancement isn't leveled up at all. <clears throat> 
She just has a stage six or stage eight overdrive set. So this could help her if I had this leveled up a little bit more, but still it's a, it's a decent build. No artifact on the character. And I am running a CTP regeneration because I'm going to show you guys some timeline ride. This is not a reforged CTP. And maybe if it was, maybe better. Maybe if I used a different CTP, like a reforged CTP of authority, maybe that'd give her a little bit more survivability. Maybe she'd be a little bit better in that respect. And something else to keep in mind, guys, is that her heal on her fist skill, I mean, this is on a nine second cooldown. Now, if she does create a bubble, which is awesome, just like what she did in her base kit, and it does give you a heal the whole time. As long as you're in the bubble, or as long as your uh, allies are in the bubble, you're going to get heals, which is actually pretty awesome, which actually makes her a, a pretty awesome support. As far as the uniform options, the first option is Loki, which sucks because it's outdated now. The next one is Cersei, which is terrific. The next one is Professor X, which is actually kind of bad. The next one is Blade, which is bad. And then the one after that is going to be uh, Mr. Fantastic in the Maker uniform, which is actually fairly decent. So the uniform options are kind of, you know, a couple of pretty decent and a few actually kind of bad. And then this increase all buff effect from her uniform effect is awesome, guys. Like when you put a damage proc, say, or 200% on her, she has a 220% damage proc. But even then, it still isn't enough. It just isn't enough. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to run with uh, this team right here. I'm going to use Ebony in the leadership because Ebony will give her that 40% increase of energy attack. That way her skills can get off cooldown in timeline. Now, maybe there'll be a better team that I could try this with, but you guys are just going to see that her damage is just, it's lacking, right? It's lacking. Uh, you know, I got a fairly decent build on her and I really was kind of hoping for more as far as how well she'd actually do in timeline. But Thanos is a big Achilles heel for her. He pretty much just murders her because she just doesn't have a lot of HP. I mean, she uses that four, which is nice, but look, I mean, she just, she just gets clapped. And this happened to me over and over and over when I was, you know, trying her out in timeline. So, I mean, that's what kind of leads me to believe that she's probably just going to be uh, fairly good for AC, but not really the greatest in timeline, at least from what I can tell. I mean, everybody's running Thanos, so it was hard for me to test against other characters. I mean, what, he'll just, I mean, he'll just clap her, guys. Yeah. She just doesn't have the survivability or the damage to take Thanos out. It's a it's a pretty big problem, honestly. Like she isn't really getting it done, which is a, a bummer. So let me see if I can find a different team that doesn't have Thanos on the damn thing. Uh, I mean, everybody's running Thanos. Everybody's running Thanos, Thanos, Thanos. I mean, it just sucks, right? And he's gonna clap her like crazy. Okay, so here's a team with Molecule Man. Emma and Adam Warlock. And let's see how she does against this team right here, right? Now, granted, if I was using a Hella, that would actually be a lot better for this team. I mean, she took out Molecule Man. Okay, good, good, good. She prioritized the four, which is really great. It's awesome that she does that. And then she just gets clapped. Right? And that's going to be the thing about her. I mean, she's just going to die really, really easy. And again, maybe with a different uh, obelisk on her, maybe she would be better. But with the CTB regeneration, I just wasn't impressed with her at all as far as damage. So we're going to go ahead and unequip this because we do got a 50% off here. And I'm going to slap this uh, CTP of energy on her. That's going to give her that ignore dodge by 44% and critical damage by 38%. It's only 180% proc. But still, you guys will get the drift. This is a CTP. We got chain hit damage on this thing. You can see her critical damage is now maxed out. And we'll jump into a fight here against Null to show you guys how much damage she actually does in PvE. This is stage 34 where you can use actual blast types. This is a really good team for her. We got Cyclops for the extra 30% increase of energy attack. We got Ebony for the increase of universal types right on the team. And she already has 30% ignore dodge from her passive. And then with the CTP of energy, she has almost 70% ignore dodge. So we have one ignore dodge striker there. And then we just have some damage to super villains. All right, so I'm going to do that again because I wasn't happy with uh, my rotation. I was actually kind of messing up a little bit there. But, I mean, seriously, guys, you're not going to be really using this character. 
in here and there you go guys like a bar and a half and we did land the proc a bar and a half come on come on come on come on, come on. there we go i mean it's just uh it's bad right it is bad and her tier three i mean we landed the proc that time guys and look we're doing like maybe two bars and then the proc lands again there right He's like, she just isn't meant for this, right? She just isn't meant for this. And you got to be really, really fast when you cancel the two, four, five. You can cancel that four immediately. I mean, this bubble is awesome because, like, if you have the bubble up and you switch your characters, they will get a heal, which is nice. That is nice. But this damage is absolutely pitiful. And this is with a CTP of energy, right? It's just, uh, it's not very good, guys. It's really, really bad, as you guys can see. I mean, she is just not getting it done. I mean, her survivability is good, right? Her survivability is really, really nice. I almost think it's better to skip that second skill because that thing does set up the proc really, really easy. But again, I just don't think players are going to be using her for PvE because... Her damage is just pitiful, guys. It's really, really bad. I mean, we're down to the middle of the 48th bar, and we're at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. I mean, there's no way that we would be able to do this. And that's with her having a legendary uniform, 180% CTP of energy, right? Obelisk on her. Uh, a fairly decent build, and she just isn't doing very well at all. Like, her damage just isn't very good. So, I mean, I honestly am just really underwhelmed with ancient one i mean she could have been so much better than this i mean obviously like if we take her in stage 19 uh, maybe a different story we get some different buffs for her right and try this here i mean obviously she'll probably do a lot better you know at stage 19 right but that isn't what people really want to hear these days and for you players that don't have any pierce i mean i just don't think she's going to be really a super great choice for a uh, PvE, but this is the thing, you know, you guys are going to see videos of her probably doing these lower levels because, you know, players with all this pierce, they can do some pretty insane damage with her. Right? They can do some pretty, pretty insane damage with her. Oh, oh. There we go. But even now, guys, even at stage 19, it's really not super super impressive i think if you hit the four or five early like before you cancel the tier three it would be a lot better there we go i'm gonna kind of get back here a little bit all right i mean her survivability is really good you don't have to worry about her dying that's for sure all right and there we actually landed the proc on the tier 3. And then we go back into the 4 or 5 afterwards. And there we saw some pretty good damage, guys. Right? Not bad, not bad, right? And I'm just waiting for that 5. Okay. Right? And she could easily, I mean, she could easily beat stage 19. But that's not on account with 22% pierce. 120% energy attack, right? It's really not all that impressive, especially after we saw what she can do against stage 35, right? Or stage 34, right? It's just, there's a big, big difference because, you know, whenever you start getting these higher levels, you're not going to have certain characters for extra buffs, right? Where they don't have wave, we don't have Taskmaster. We're using weaker buffs for one thing. So characters really need to shine. So I feel like she's really just going to be more of a support than anything in PvE. I feel like she's going to be a really decent AC character. But in timelines, she feels pretty lackluster. But maybe some other people have some different outcomes when it comes to her. But I personally don't think this uniform is worth picking up unless you really love Ancient One and you're really hardcore into AC.
unless you really want a really great support, which is definitely useful. And I like I always say, guys, I mean, she does have some relevance because of that. She's going to be a really great PvE support because you can actually use her heal from her fist skill when you're switching your characters. She's going to give that extra elemental damage. She's got a really great leadership for blast time. So in that respect, she's going to be really great for you to pick up. But as a solid damage dealer herself, she's actually quite bad. And for timeline, I just don't think she's really that great. She dies way too easy and really doesn't do near enough damage to take down the meta characters. So let me know what y'all think about Ancient One. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GNG plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See everybody.